Greetings friends, it's Denise again with Denise's Dancing Paintbrush and today I've got another watercolor to share with you. This one is another of the botanicals that I've enjoyed so much doing. Um, it is a goldfinch and some grapes. I'm doing this one as a commission for a, a dear friend who lives many, many states away, but um, emails me regularly, which is very nice, and she just loves living with my work. So she has many of my pieces. As I draw out the uh, goldfinch and the grapes here, I was thinking today about um, how grateful I am for my vision. I have a rather strong astigmatism, which no one noticed, or at least no one told anyone about, for uh, many years until I was 12, almost 13. And what happened was, my family was bowling with, with my aunt and uh, her husband, and I don't know why I was asking for the time. I think it was probably because there was a TV show that I so much enjoyed and was hoping we would get home in time for it. So like the third or fourth time I asked my aunt, what time is it? And she said, can't you read a clock? Well, you know, at 12, of course I can read a clock. She says, well, then there it is, right there. And she pointed to the end of the alley. As you know, a bowling alley, it, it's quite long. Well, long for someone who can't see. <laughs> and I, I told her what a stupid place that was to put a clock. All I could see was a round white disc against the wall. I couldn't see hands or numbers or anything else. And I assumed, I mean, as you do as a child, you assume everyone sees the same way that you do. And she looked at me funny and kind of scrunched up her nose. She said, you can't see those numbers? Well, no. Can anybody? So right away, she's alarmed. She goes to my mom, says, you need to have her eyes checked. And of course, the doctor said, you're legally blind. Without glasses, you need a seeing eye dog. I thought he was being amusing, but apparently it is true. At a certain point, you are considered legally blind. Um, I guess from about 12 inches from my nose, everything becomes blurry. And so there you are. When I got glasses, well, you know, back then, they were made of glass and they were extremely heavy and sat on my nose really awkwardly and would often slide down. I guess I have a little bit of a greasy face. And uh, they made sores on my nose. Oh, I just hated them. Plus, of course, everybody called me four eyes, which I didn't appreciate. I, at 12 and, you know, going on 13, you're already having some insecurity about your appearance the awkwardness of your body changing, tripping over things, everything is odd and awkward and glasses did not help my self-esteem. But I couldn't believe how much I could see. I started pointing out individual leaves, blades of grass. I could stand at full height and see blades of grass. I asked my mom if she could see them and she laughed at me. Apparently, I'm the only one who couldn't see them before. 
it made things so much more clear. Of course, everyone could play the game of, um, we played a game called the ABC um, license plates, where we would pick out letters from the uh, license plates going through the alphabet, or ABC billboards, or, you know, and you'd have to call out the word and call out the letter that you saw, and I could never get them. I couldn't see far enough away. And now I can play the game. But seeing was just the most awesome thing. And it was about this year that my my art became very, very apparent. I wasn't aware, but everybody else became aware that my drawing improved immeasurably. And my love for color and for reality, <laughs> realism, improved that year too. So there you go. I have been in love with nature and realism ever since. In my grapes, as you can see, I am adding a bunch of different colors. I was going to say all the colors of the rainbow, and I'm not sure if there are all of the colors, but the interesting thing about light is that in its bouncing off of reflective surfaces, all of the spectrum becomes apparent even if you don't see it or are not aware of it, it actually is there. In your skin tone even, there is green and blue and violet. In grapes, there's going to be pinks and blues and purples and greens and yellows. All of the colors of the rainbow should be there. Even in this branch that I am painting, I am trying to put in not just brown and black, but purple and green and red. The shadows should not be shadowed in gray or black. That's so flat and lifeless. As a matter of fact, black is not really a color. It is the absence of light. And therefore, things in shadows, unless there's no light at all, shouldn't be black. They should still have some of spectral color. The, the low range of the spectrum, which is violet, and indigo. So things in shadow I try and keep uh, colorful even, even though they're dark. I've taken to using indigo, which is a really cool dark, dark blue, almost black. It's kind of a blue-gray it is such a beautiful blue, it works for my black. I, I prefer it to using lamp black, which is such an ugly, icky, sooty color, dare I say it? I think that it is actually made from soot from lamps, which is why they call it lamp. Fun for me to paint. I hope you've enjoyed.
grapes, the goldfinch, the branch with all the colors. I love being able to see all these colors. It's just so amazing. Nature is wonderful. Thank you so much for listening to me ramble this morning, and I do hope you come again and subscribe and check out some of my links below. I have a page in Patreon where people support my work, and I have paintings for sale on Etsy. Bye, everyone. See you next time.